Hey there, everyone. We are back after an incredible MSC cruise adventure. This was our first MSC cruise ever. And today I'm going to tell you the seven things that I loved about our MSC cruise adventure and a few of the things that I really didn't. Let's dive into it today. We can't have a discussion about MSC without talking about the first thing that I really liked about this cruise, the price. The price of this cruise was outstandingly low, especially considering the fact that I'm used to the Disney cruise prices. You can go on an MSC cruise for a fraction of the price that it costs to go on something like the Disney Cruise Line. The cost savings were not just, you know, comparing an inside stateroom to a balcony stateroom. I'm talking about balcony to balcony, oranges to oranges. You are comparing the exact same thing or something at least extremely similar. I know technically it's not the same room, but you get the idea. A balcony stateroom to a balcony stateroom. The same amount of time that you're out at sea going to private islands, Nassau, basically the same itinerary, but the cost was maybe a third or a quarter of the cost. It was an outstanding deal. So the first thing I loved was cost, no question. Second thing kind of follows up pretty closely, the crowds and the number of people in the different pools. Now we talked about the price saving, but when you think about saving costs, sometimes you're thinking about lesser quality, right? And we're gonna get back to that discussion in a moment. However, the second item that I loved about the MSC Divina, the cruise that we were on, the number of spaces there they had in the pools all around the ship. It's true that our cruise was not at 100% capacity, not even close. We were less than 70% to be honest with you. But that being said, I was on a Royal Caribbean cruise, Independence of the Seas, a couple months ago. Really liked it, had a great time, but very similar itinerary, set, uh, three nights, not seven, I was almost, almost at seven there for a second. Three nights, going in, having a great time, the pool was constantly, completely full. I mean, you could not slide your body in there because it was shoulder to shoulder in the pool. It was truly, truly crowded. The MSC Divina, even though it didn't have the 100%, and neither did the Independence when I went on it, they seemed to have more pools and they were separated in a way that made it easier for guests to find a space and not be super crowded the whole time. Even though I didn't make it into the garden pool during our cruise, I made it into that solarium area, which I really loved and I went there several times. This includes when we were at port like Nassau and also when we were at sea a little bit, like when we were out and about, still had plenty of space in those pools. So there's something to be said about not more space throughout the ship, but more of these smaller, more smaller areas throughout, including those pools, which I really liked. The third item on our list that I loved about the MSC experience was the nightlife and the fact that they had something for everyone. We went to several bands, although my Achilles was hurting a bit at the end of most nights. I had to cut it short basically every night, except for one where I went out and about and I saw some of the bands that were playing. Some were playing classical music. Some were playing very upbeat, happy songs. Some were playing like just motivational, just like, you know, everybody get into it now. It was just like a party experience, you know? So for me, these different styles of nightlife entertainment, not everybody wants to just be like, you know, screaming. Some people want something totally different, right? So that's that, the fact that they had something for everyone was truly fantastic. I loved the nightlife entertainment that they had, even though you had to basically you know, either drink or shop at night, there weren't any other activities that I found, it was still really nice. The fourth item that I really liked on board the MSC Divina was the fact that you had the opportunity to pay your bill in a different way than other cruise lines. This is not something that I've talked about a lot before on the channel, but when you go on a cruise, usually there are unexpected expenses at the end of your adventure. Happens to most people, right? Those of us who have cruised for a long time just kind of know to expect a maybe a maybe $100 bill, maybe $150 at the end of the experience where, you know, they had the service charges and fees and all those things that maybe you weren't 100% expecting at the end of your adventure. It's just smart to plan it that way, just in case. With MSC, it was different because you had the opportunity to, to pay for those things at kiosks around the ship. It was at the end of the adventure I actually received the bill, but I asked for it uh, two day, a day prior where I got the bill and I was able to see what it was going to be at the end. Technically, you can do that with other cruise lines too, no question. But the fact that you could pay for it at any point during the cruise at one of these kiosks was nice. There is kind of a negative to it too that I do want to touch on here since we're talking about it. If you don't pay that bill before you get off the ship, they will stop you at the exit. I actually saw it happen to many people <laughs> as I was exiting the ship. They said, sorry, you have an unpaid bill. You have to go back in. It, it was really interesting how they did that. That I think is something that is a little confusing for me to understand because what happens if you don't have a credit card? What your credit card just doesn't work? Happens to all of us. So what, the, the MSC collector is gonna call you? I, I don't know. I have no idea how that works, but I did like that factor to it. The, the more control of what you're paying for. Number five, and this is a controversial opinion, I thought the staff on board was fantastic. Now I've heard from others that 
the staff experiences that they've had on board the MSC cruises have not been great, right? I went into it knowing that the staff experience might not be great. I have to admit, calling on the phone prior to the cruise, that was awful. They, they need to fix that for sure. But on board, they were bending over backwards to make sure that I had a great experience. Was it like the lavish things that I, you know, you, you get sometimes where you feel like over the top experience? Maybe not, but I did not feel like I was lacking in service at all. I went to guest services. They were always very friendly to me. They were just like, oh yeah, absolutely. Let me get you help with that. Oh, we can fix you that for you. We can fix the table thing. They were just like on it. They were able to get my requests accommodated, fixed my safe immediately. Like I didn't wait that long at all. They, they were there. So the guest experience that I had was outstanding. That being said, I have heard enough from others that say that it's kind of a variable experience. Sometimes it seems like it's great. I had a great time. Other times people say it's not the best guest service ever. So it is going to vary. I have no doubt about that. I've just, I've heard enough at this point to understand that it is going to vary. I had a great time though. The sixth thing that I really liked about the MSC cruise, the room. Surprisingly, I felt that the room was extremely calm, nice, great location right by the elevators. Didn't feel far from much and it was really well designed. It's true that I like the split bathrooms, but since I was cruising solo, having the bathroom to myself, it was really nice. I was kind of expecting it to be just the walk-in shower, not the bath, but they had the bath included with it. There was a lot to like about the room. Balcony was nice, good chairs out there. Overall, that room experience was really nice. Felt at home. I could always kind of sit back and relax in the room if I needed a little break. Never felt like I like wanted to avoid the room because it was like, oh, I didn't like it or anything like that. Really did like it. And the seventh thing that I absolutely loved about our MSC Cruise Adventure, Ocean Key. I cannot tell you how much I loved that island. It is definitely up there with one of my favorite private destinations in the Bahamas. It was outstanding, crystal clear blue water, fish in the water, just areas to sit back and relax, included chairs and umbrellas. There was so much to love about Ocean Key. We're gonna go deeper into it in another video, but I loved that island. Now let's talk about the things I really did not care for on board the MSC Divina. The first thing that I think could be improved and I really didn't care for, you probably guessed it, was the food. I found, I think, one or two items that I'd go out of my way for, those short ribs, I'm, I still remember the short ribs, and I think one other item, which were really good, right? Other than that, the food was good or adequate, right? No food besides those two really blew me away. The artichoke pizza was another one. That, that one was really good too, but there were like few and far between. I think overall food quality can be enhanced on the MSC Cruise Line, which will bring it up to a brand new level. Maybe that's not their strategy, right? Maybe their strategy is to get those costs low. And for the price I paid, really did like it. But just a small increase in food quality would be awesome. The second thing that I kind of found difficult on board the MSC Cruise was the language barrier. Now, for me personally, I usually have no issues at all communicating with people who are uh, who don't speak English natively, right? You can usually kind of work through it. I've been around that my entire life. We'll work with people who really have broken English, no problem, and I just communicate very easily. Some, for some reason, the MSC Cruise, I feel like the, the, it was less than broken English, so it was very difficult, and I tried to communicate as best I could, but I felt like, especially at the, in the serving area, so my, my server and the maitre d', it was, like, it was like there was no wanting to communicate. It was, it was just like a just like a nod, you know, it was, it, it, was a, it was a lack of wanting to communicate. Maybe it's because of the language barrier, maybe that is part of the service that you know, we talked about. I don't know, I don't know what that was, but there was one or two times and on the beach uh, one time where it was just difficult to get the message across or try and have a conversation. You know, no matter what I did, it was, it was very tricky. And I don't think I was the only guest who experienced that. And I have heard that review before and I definitely experienced it on board. Wasn't that bad. Wasn't to a point where it's like, I'm not on MSC anymore. No, not at all. Still, still had a great time. It's just that that kind of was a little thing to work around. Something else that I really didn't care for on board was the surcharge at the dinner table. So you may recall, I kind of showed you on the ship, the lemonade, strawberry, kiwi, mango, tropical mango drinks, coffee, and tea are included with your cruise fare and water as well. Those beverage stations. You do not have to have a beverage package to enjoy those things. That being said, at the dinner table, it's a little different. If you want lemonade or iced tea or those things that are offered included at the buffet, there's a charge for them at the dining room. That to me makes no sense. That that's that's that, that that's ridiculous. That makes absolutely no sense. And I think that they should include those included drinks at the dinner table outside of water. But that's just something else they wanted to charge for at the black crab, which is supposed to be included with your meal. There was a lot of upcharging as well. Do you want to touch on that? It wasn't a point where it was disturbing me, but every single night I was asked, 
would you like to get some wine? Would you like to get some soda? Let me get you some soda. Are you sure you don't want, you want tap water? You don't want bottled water? So it was, it was a lot of upcharge moments, not too, too much, right? I didn't feel overwhelmed with it, but there was a lot. Last but certainly not least, something to improve that I really did not care for on board the MSC Davina were the stage shows. I felt like those, I guess that they were probably suited more for those in the Italian audience, right? People who come from overseas who really enjoy this kind of entertainment. And that's great. That's their clientele. Totally get it. But for someone like me who loves just like stage shows that where the props are moving around, they got sets, they got all this, that kind of show I did not enjoy as much. I felt like they could have done a much, much better job with just kind of changing it up a bit. More, more of what they were doing really well in the second show. More acrobatics, right? More juggling more really interpretive dance moves, right? Really cool or contortionists who are doing all sorts of cool things. More of that, less of the, I'll, I'll put it very bluntly, less of the songs that were sung in English by those who don't speak English very well. That's just what happened, right? And that's, there's no problem with that, but it was, it was very odd, very odd. And um, not my favorite part of the MSC adventure. I would just skip it next time. That's me, but we did experience that. And it's one thing to improve in the future. Overall, it was an amazing adventure. Really enjoyed it. Is MSC my highest priority cruise line in all the cruising adventures we're going to go on now and in the future? No, it's not. But that being said, we will be on more MSC cruises in the future for sure, especially the newer ships. Definitely want to experience those with you. I know it's going to be a ton of fun. Now, if you've been on an MSC cruise before and you want to add something to the list, whether it's a good or whether it's something that you would like to see them change, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. A special thanks to our patrons for making all of our videos possible. And thanks to you for watching. Until next time, have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.